time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to blank. Hey! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live, August 8th on a Thursday. S&P's back up 116, NASDAQ up 525, Russell up 47, Dow up 677, gold up almost 1.5%, silver up almost 2.5, notes and bonds red, 10-year yield up about 0.6%, oil up over 1, natty gas up a little under 1%, all the grains are red, euro a little bit red, pound a little bit green, Bitcoin up almost 9%. VIX at 24.80, down about 11% from yesterday's close. I uh, I had a bearish bias going into, from yesterday, going into today. That obviously didn't play out. However, I am uh, pretty proud of myself because I didn't really do much in the way of putting my money towards a bearish bias. So that was good. Although I did hold, I held three, two or three MNQ futures short overnight. And I closed those right out right at the open. So took a hit on those. But had a couple long day trades this morning and have just been kind of picking my spots with price action iron condors today. Did a double calendar. The price action ones, uh, just did, I've done two today. One's hit 20 and 40%. One has hit 20. Looks like it might be close to also hitting 40 Actually, my first one is almost getting close to 80%. Um, so those have been good. Did a double calendar in SPX. Started with seven lots, scaled out at 10 and 20%. Still have three left. I'll close those out by the end of today. Um, and I think that is about it. Got my rut hedges on, my rut from yesterday is not looking good. It's pretty well centered. And then my rut from today is a little, little bit red. Oh, I did I did have uh, early and a late Rick, just small one lots. Um, they had very little upside profit. So I closed both of those, each for about 9% profit. Uh, but that's about it. Chad, what's up with you? Oh man, it's been such a such a great day. I mean, oh, real, real quick, we started Chad, out before you, before you start. What's that? Um, yeah. Chess master and anybody else. So it is today is an up day. Uh, we're up over we're up one point two percent from the open. So as far as power hour goes, I'm going to continue to do just uh, some price action trades, but it certainly qualifies for an up day. In fact. Actually, now that I'm saying it, in my other account, I am going to do update, iron uh, update power hour. So, uh, sorry, Chad, go ahead. Oh, you're good. Yeah, we started out this morning, had a four figure three uh, three winners to continuation runners with our our day trading strategies. It was that was great. Um, and this honestly has been the the type of price action I've dreamed of with a high VIX. Um, Let's see, I've had three trades. My AM number one, 20, 40, 60, and out. Uh, and when I closed it, my puts were worth 90 cents still. I just went and closed them. So bigger than normal winner. Um, lunchtime number one, 20, 40. I got two contracts left in that one. Lunchtime number two, 20, 40. Two contracts left in that one. And so no power hour trade 
uh, for me until, um, you know, if I go 60 and out on these trades or at least one of them, um, then I will entertain the idea. But my lunchtime number two is sitting dead center. Um, my lunchtime number one, I mean, it was towards the short strike, 53.30. And that down move when it hit was exactly, exactly what that trade needed. I was, I was even considering thinking like, man, maybe I should just close this out for a scratch because that's about where it was. It's like, but I was like, nah, you know, if, it, if I hit a down move here, like it'll book like 20, 40, maybe even 60, like really quick. And so that is where I'm at with my trades. So barring some type of just idiot, ridiculous decisions by myself, this should be a really nice green day. <laughs> Let's try to keep those uh, at bay. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's happened before. So chess master, here's my, here's tranche one of my update power hour. It's a, it's two to one puts to calls. So there shouldn't be any, if you, assuming you have option Omega, which you, you need to have, if you're, if you plan to trade any back tested strategies, all the details of the strategy are on the back test, but it's just an iron condor, but double the puts versus the calls. Yeah, Jersey, uh, Jersey TE. Yeah, no worries about questions. I mean, I I answer repeat questions all the time, um, but in the course, I mean, that's I try to uh, make sure that I leave no stone unturned. And so, a quick way to get the answer is through Discord. Um, but all, all the answers typically are in the course. But there are lots of examples of the profit targets with the uh, total fill price in the course. Um, one thing I might mention about the TLC, it's been uh, this 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 week's been a little different. I mean, I've had to, I've had to kind of, and I don't know about you, um, Steve, with your price action trades, but I've had to kind of adjust on the fly because I've never really been in an environment where the volatility and the VIX was this high as it's been in the past week. And so, you know, I've been faced with decisions on, okay, uh, my puts, first off, how far do I want to, in the morning on my AM number one, how far out do I want to go in terms of my wings? You know, I mean, normally it's, in the, the environment I started trading with the strategy was 50 wide, right? You know, so now it's like, man, I could, I could go a hundred. I could go 150 if I want to get to the cheaper longs, but then the buying power is outrageous. And so most of the time this week, it's been about a buck 30, buck 40 on the put side. And so I've been kind of managing the entire iron condor 20, 40%. And well, with each profit target that I hit, I, I look at the put side or whichever side is the most expensive and I kind of see, okay, yeah, yeah, I can, then I look at the call side and see if they're value at all, because if there's no value in them, you're not going to be able to close out an iron condor profit target. Um, but I was able to do that today with 20 and 40%. Now, as I'm going to 60%, my calls aren't really worth anything anymore. So now I'm back to managing the 60% with just the shorts. And so, that is just kind of me experimenting on the fly given new trading situations. And so, you know, maybe confusing as you see me posting profits and things. And, but it's like sometimes you got to just try to adapt with the environment you're trading in. Right. So yeah, I thought I'd, I, thought was, I'd share I had that, that issue with nugget. Schwab stopping me out randomly. So I stopped doing OCO orders. Uh, and I just started using trade steward and I had my bot set up to do 50 wide. So I've just been sticking with 50 wide personally, but I would, if I was, if I was entering it manually, I would, I would be going wider. Yeah. 
yeah, I've kind of experimented with 70 to 100 wide right in there, you know. And then, you know, the, the lunchtime ones, we'll see what were they. They were 60. And, the, and here's another thing. They don't always have to be exactly even either. I did 50 wide on my lunchtime number two on both sides. But I mean, in terms of like, I, I, I haven't even been close at all to being stopped out. I mean, not even, I haven't been, the closest I got to was like $3 from being stopped out of my lunchtime number one. And then we had this down move. So like, this is truly what I envisioned when we would, if we would ever get a higher VIX. Yep. When you get the, after the VIX spike and when it starts contracting, that is by far the best, man. Except premium A, the premium just gets sucked out so quickly. And B, obviously you're wider. Then you get those little pockets. Yeah, to be honest consolidation. with you. Consolidation like today, it just sucks it out. And to be honest with you, like I probably could have just let all three of these iron. Well, let me let me check out the first one. Uh, Theta so junkie, I, I just have. use one bot, and I have my profit target set at eighty percent, and then I just manually close. So it's not that it's not that automated. It's just using trade steward, but I'm still manually managing it basically. Just so I don't have to have the resting stock okay. at toss because Schwab's had such issues with that. So, you know, here's something I've learned from this environment. And, you know, so, you know, who knows how long this environment will last? When will we ever be in it again? Who knows? But we're getting valuable experience here because. To be honest with you, all three of these trades I've placed today, my three iron condors, I could have let them almost go to max profit. I mean, I could have, one would have been a 7,100 winner, 7,800 winner, and a 6,600 winner. All three of them, well, I mean, my, my number one is closed out, but neither none of them have come even close to being stopped. So I guess my point is, is like, I could have skipped profit targets if I wanted um, but you know, it's, this is a new environment, so I didn't, but that could be something I look at doing in the future. You know, I'm still, I'm still in my lunchtime. Number one, I'm still, I'm 80 points wide here. Price is just right of center. I'm 55 wide on my lunchtime number two, and it's just left of center. Yeah, I think I think it's hard to say that that's something you could do in this environment because we've also seen some massive swings after consolidation. Today just happened to be we had that push up, no consolidation, and then from there it's just stayed pretty steady, Eddie. Right, but I'm saying is that might be something I look at doing in the future. I would never do it in the environment we're in now in terms of because there have been such wild moves, but because I've never traded this strategy in this environment. Hey, Anthony. Uh, so really it's, it's very similar to what Chad was doing. I just call it that just so there wasn't any confusion because I was doing things a little bit different, but I'm pretty much doing things almost identical to what Chad does on the TLC stuff. So his, his, uh, the detailed presentation of that is in the trade plans channel. Right below this one. It's more pullback here. Okay, so right on went, the upper expected move. Yeah, I just went 60 and out on my um, lunchtime number one with this down move. This, okay, so this is also, you know, I told you I almost, I was thinking of just closing it out for a scratch because it was testing that upper short strike. I'm glad I didn't like this is another example of trusting the process.
Yep, Kelvin, I've got a couple price actions on, and then I've got tranche one of an update on. Which is currently at about break even after this little push down. Hoping we hold above the expected move. It's in the, the it's in my trade plan, Chessmaster. On my trade plan sheet, I post my trade plan once a month. I haven't posted it for August yet, but it's pretty much the same as it what I was doing for July. So you'll see that in the trade plans channel. Yeah, it was on my screen for about 20 minutes. Did you not see it? Here it is. That was that's tranche one. But like I said, all the details are on the uh, Option Omega backtest link, <clears throat> which is included in the trade plan. Getting a little bounce off the expected move area. Okay, so I only have one trade left on. It's the lunchtime number two. And that's only two contracts left. It's just left of center. So if I was going to put on a power hour trade, I'd be sharing the 5290 strikes. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and just see if I can just book a 16 out on this. And then I'll reevaluate whether I want to enter a power hour trade or not. My tranche two update will fire here in about five minutes. Uh, I already I already booked forty percent um, Moel RDT. My AM my my AM Iron Condor has been sixty percent and out for for a while now. If that's the one you're talking about, I closed. It was closed out a while ago. I didn't do any transformers today, but I've got a couple on from yesterday that were downside uh, that we're looking for downside so those are going to hit minimum profit one in SPX and one in NDX I actually I did do a one DTE after we had that initial little push down and we got a little bit of an IV pump I, I entered a one DTE and then when we started grind higher I just I closed it out for loss
Uh, no power yet, Kelvin. Okay, so I just posted, you can see in the live chat channel where my lunchtime number two is. And so what I was talking about, like in the future, when I can get this wide in this environment of letting it just not taking 20%, letting it cook here. I mean, I've done that before with a low VIX. So I put this trade on at 1245 Central. So price has been in about a 20 to 25 point range since I put this on. And it's a 55 wide iron condor. Now, it's never been close to being stopped. So what, so what I was saying earlier was, you know, getting more experience in trading this new environment may lead to more, you know, adapting the strategy a little bit. I just close the remaining contracts of that one four double calendar. And nice, Kelvin. My tranche one is up 18% of my up day. Tranche two is getting ready to fire here in about 15 seconds. I think I settled on 25 Delta. I looked at 20 and then I looked at 30 and I think I just, I settled on 25. That's where it was when it entered, when I entered. Tranche two just fired. And that is on the 5,300 puts, 5,335 calls, two to one for a 650 credit. Tranche number one, I got a 920 credit. <clears throat> I, I I just got filled on I'm sixty percent out. Lunchtime number two. So those are, these are my two tranche one and tranche two updates combined. All right, so I'm out of everything. So now I'm going to look at a power hour trade. Uh, I've got some overlapping strikes or something else here. So I've got to, so I can't properly display it. You can overlap longs together and you can overlap shorts together. You just can't overlap longs and shorts because they'll just cancel each other out. You just got to make sure that <clears throat> you just got to make sure that, you know, when you're looking at your platform, what you've got on. One way you can do that is you can go to your filled orders. So here's my tranche two, for example. So I could just put that in there. 
And that's an easy way just to view it by itself. Yeah, exactly, Talon. Order canceled. Okay, I'm I just got filled on the fifty three thirties, fifty three oh fives, and forty wide. Or six eighty five. My first price action trade, I've got three contracts left, got in at 575 and it's trading for a buck. Just gonna hold for now. Uh, are you are you on toss, Talon? That's probably right. You probably get a uh, a, a a message when you try to send it saying it's going to cancel the other order. Would you like to proceed? Yeah, that's just not going through. I usually get a message saying it's going to cancel my other order. Plus, if I mean, longs are easy because you can just move those one strike, so you don't have that overlap. You know, if you're trying to target three dollars on the shorts, that's a little bit different because you know you're either going to go four bucks or two fifty. So you, you know you want to. You want to choose the correct one on the shorts, but the longs, if if you're, you know, buying 10 or 15 cent or there's multiple 10 cent ones, just move the strike. That'll solve that easily. Mm -hmm. Big movers in stocks today, Beyond Meat, up 27%. All the way back up to $6.70. PLTR up 10%, Reddit up 10%, Riot Blockchain up 10%, NVIDIA up 6 Only a few little red guys. Jumia, Pfizer, Plug, DLTR, and FedEx. Uh, Chad, looks like Theta Junkie has a question for you. All right, sorry, I just got back to my desk and went to the restroom. He only had one position on, which already answered the talking at 4%. Which had a 4% fills up pretty much. So if I'm putting on a second one, it's all depending on where price is at in that first one. If I'm centered on it or just or close to center, then I'm not. Now, if I had already booked, say, 40% and I got two contracts left and that's it out of 10, 
then I then I might consider it, depending on what price was doing. But if I booked twenty percent and I had not, and so so for me, booking twenty percent would mean I'm closing five contracts. I got five left. So so that that one I would have to get off center per my rule before I entered a new one. Yeah. But if I was to have booked 40% and I closed, you know, I went, I booked five, I've closed three more. I only got two left. The price ain't moving. Well, then I would consider it because you just, you know, you're, it, it's the risk you're putting on, right? Because if you, if I got five contracts left, I've only booked 20% and I add another one and it's, that that one that's got five left is not off centered and then price goes against me. Well, that that one that I booked 20 percent is now scratch trade and the other one's a full loss. OK, so you've you've added more risk. Yeah, so chess master, are you looking at this point right at uh, two o'clock central? Yeah, that would be a Johnny Cash. But keep in, keep in mind, you know, there's nothing magic about this trend line. It's just a way, it's just a line in the sand to determine if you're an uptrend or a downtrend. But yeah, if, if price comes down near that, then yeah, that would that's what we would consider Johnny Cash. Also one came pretty close at 8.45 a.m. It's simply using that trend line as a line in the sand to manage risk around. So if price comes down close to it, get long. You know, if it if it turns into a downtrend, then you you just close out the trade. That's that's your exit point. My update tranche one's at 31%. My update tranche two's at 14%. Tranche three is getting ready to fire pretty soon. Tranche three is on the 95 puts and the 35 calls for 465. Update power hour tranches, Moel. No, neither. <clears throat> Just look on my trade plan sheet and you'll see power hour update. I'll show you all the all the criteria. Just haven't haven't done it much. At least, you know, when when volatility was low and you have an update, volatility gets crushed. By the time you get to power hour, there's no premium left. So I, I haven't really been doing them too much, but now with now with some premium. Um, makes it make, makes a lot more sense. So 
So tranche one is getting close to 40%. So I'm getting ready to reduce my stop on that one. Uh, one other thing about just for my TLC traders, um, just want to reiterate this again. So, so earlier today we were, we were having just a short discussion about, um, adding an iron condor. Um, you know, I think it was sand raised, closed one out at 20%, even though price hadn't really moved. I, I was like, you know, Hey, you're going to miss profit targets on that. You know, not, not trying to give you a hard time sand or anything, but, um, just got to remember that we want price to move so we can add a second iron condor so that then price bounces around. We're booking profits on both. Like that's the, that's the whole premise of, of the whole process. And if you're not doing that, then, or if you're closing early or whatever, a lot, then you're not really sticking to the process. And so, um, you know, I'll get asked sometimes, you know, Hey, I, 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 I don't have the success you have. I don't have, uh, you know, I've lost more than I won or, you know, I always ask, I always want to ask questions to drill down deeper to find out, you know, are you sticking to the process or not? And most of the time it's, they're not, you know, they're not. And so that's, that's one key part of the process is getting some price movement so that you can then find new consolidation and then add to it. And, you know, I used to, I'm, I'm, I'm a big, like follow the, if you haven't noticed, I'm a big, like follow the rules follow the process person. And that stems from my 15 years of being a principal. We would have, we would have school goals. We would have classroom goal, uh, teachers would have classroom goals aligned to the school goals. The kids would have their own goals aligned to the class goals. And so everything followed a process. And I would always tell people, if you're not aligned, then we're just doing random acts of improvement. Okay. And so same thing with TLCs. Like if you're just putting on iron condors, but not following the process, then you're just putting on random iron condors and hoping for the best. And so, you know, hopefully, hopefully that kind of makes sense about how important the pro following the process is. Just closed out one of my price action trades for 70 cents. Got five lots left on this one. Took half off at 20%, but I've just been holding the rest. I'd like to stay above this expected move area where we're at right now. It's down move. My up day tranche two and three are not liking either. I yeah, need a little up movement here to help my power hour trade. Yeah, I liked where we were about five minutes ago better. If we don't make any moves, I think we might be able to get filled on the homes by the end of the day, but 
We just need to stay in this tiny range. Not do anything crazy here. got uh, 28 minutes to go okay so i just put on a, a power hour two because my number one was pretty off centered so it was the 5320s 5390s or i'm sorry 5320s 5290s and 40 wide now getting a down move my tranche one is gonna get stopped so I'd already reduced my stop on that. So that was for a small loss. And then my tranche three just got stopped. Yep, I just got stopped as well on my power hour one. Tranche two is still alive. Still got my price action trade on here. But could use a little bounce. Use a little bounce. SPX right below the expected move line, right at the top of that previous morning consolidation area. Tesla coming down pretty hard. Microsoft coming down. And stopped on my update tranche too. So all three of the updates got stopped. One of them, I got my stop reduced. So it was a little, little more than a scratch. The other two did not get reduced. So all I've got left is my price action here. And I've still got five lots left on it. Still need a little bounce. Hey, Steve, I know I wasn't in the live stream yesterday, but did you see my late power hour trade yesterday? I saw you took, yeah, I saw, I saw you post a, that you took one like 15, 15 minutes, minutes left before the bell or something. Yeah. I just felt really confident yesterday. How wide? Uh, let's see, what was it? It was 25 wide. Wow. So the bears are not out of the woods yet. We couldn't clear yesterday's high. 
but they made a yeah, I need some bulls made a run today. Yeah, Microsoft all the way down to where it opened. Wow. Yeah, Microsoft's getting hit. Yeah, I shouldn't have closed. I just closed my puts on my power hour. Number one, maybe I shouldn't have done that. So my power hour was a minus number one was a minus twenty nine fifty. And my power hour two is just about just left of center. Still get in for thirty wide. Yeah, if I wasn't left, just left of center. 22 minutes to go. You're tempted, aren't you? Oh, I'm I'm kind of in a similar situation. Mine's mine's just just lower as well. I just need a little bounce to get right back to center. But yes, tempted for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't believe yesterday. Like literally it went from 20% to 60% like that, like in a minute. As soon as as soon as I put in um as soon as as soon as I got filled on my 20%, I went in like it had already blew past the 50%. So I just closed at 60% three my other contracts and then I had then I when it filled, I I just immediately closed it and got I think it was 220 and then my last two at two bucks. So because we had a little, we had a little bit of a sharp down move. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, once I, once it got down to two twenty, cause I normally go 60% now. Right. So I got out of five contracts at 20%. And then I got out of three at 60 because it went to 60 so quick. And then I was like, well, I usually go out at 60 so that I just, Immediately went to go put it in and then close the final two and got filled at two bucks. And then it was like, I don't know, two or three minutes later, then it started like really moving. It's a nice little bounce here. Yeah, I'm back to about dead center now. Fifty three oh five butterflies might be trading for seventy cents. Man, just barely got stopped on my power hour number one. Uh. Okay. Bounce with a right back in range.
And this one's now trading for just over a buck. Might shed a couple contracts here. Although it well, is I was 60 wide. Maybe I'll just leave it. I got an order at 465 to close half my power hour number two. I saw it touch 460, but it never filled. Now it's up to 530. So a little bit of an unlucky power hour here so far. Bar barely stopped on power hour one, then it bounced. You know, my power hour two is off center. There we go. Filled at 20%. EVXY down about 11%. Vertical close to getting green. My little, let's see, my little crowd strike butterflies working. Gold, nice little bounce today, getting closer to back to center. Euro, pretty close to center. Oh, I did put on a new uh, ES Hedgehog today. Keep in mind the underlying futures in two different expirations, so the risk graph is going to look a little wonky. All right, I'm going to take a couple contracts off here. I'll leave two on. Take three off. SPX is getting that look in its eye. Like it wants new highs of day. Build it a dollar, one dollar. MOC in a little under five minutes. I mean, we've just had a 20 point range. So those butterflies are going to be cheap. VIX down to 2413. I went ahead and closed my uh, remaining power hour trade at 515. I'm not going to mess with the last 15 minutes today. Yeah, I'm going to close this out before MOC here in a few minutes.
Could be, Mauro. Could be. We have another day like today. We'll definitely be under VIX 20. I hope we get one more leg down. I just want one more leg down. Preferably overnight. Just one more. <laughs> I just I can't get on I just can't get on board to be a bull. Just makes me feel icky. <laughs> All right, MOC in two minutes. I guess I'll close the these remaining two. Yeah, I missed that on this down move would help me. Oh well. Build at 50 cents. <clears throat> All right, so I'm out of everything. 15 butterflies. Trading for maybe a dollar, 85 cents. So about 5,400 on my two price action trades today. On my three power hour update tranches, minus 3,200. Couple small Rick winners. Couple nice day trades, so overall, Nice, nice green day. Nice double calendar trade. Yep, I'm out of everything. So plus 64.85 on five MOC. TLC. 170 million buy side, so pretty small. I would expect nothing less out of you, Theta Junkie. Nice work. Six thousand four hundred eighty-five on TLC and one thousand two hundred thirty on day trades. Good day, great day, good day. Well, this week has been. I'm just just realizing this week has really turned into something pretty good, pretty great. I'm going to start putting in some butterfly orders here, but with the assumption, probably not going to get filled. 
I'll wait a couple minutes to see where price is going to be. Thirteen winners, four losers for the week so far. Nice. We didn't have that little twenty point move down and then back up. I bet we would have been able to play Mahomes, but I think that actually also is going to keep the flies cheap. <clears throat> yeah, my power R one would have been a profit too. Yeah, that little flush took me out of my my three power hour update tranches too. They would they would all be winners had that not happened. All right, I'm gonna start putting in some flies. And I got a 15 and a 20. Six minutes to go. So now I got a 10, 15, and 20. Down to fifty three oh eight, three and a half minutes. I'm not going to put anything below the fifty three oh five because if we keep moving down, it's not going to get filled anyway.
We are hovering right at the upper expected move. Three notes to go. No, yeah, what if we go higher or lower tomorrow? I'm sticking with lower. Me and Morrow, we both want it lower. I'm going to stay higher. Krish wants it lower, too. Well, I knew what he was going to say. <laughs> I'm going to say higher. Yeah, no kidding, Theta Junkie. I would take that in a heartbeat. It's nice not having to worry about getting stopped out. Uh, yeah, JG, I did two power hour trades. I even called him out in the live stream, actually. So the 10 butterflies knocking on $2, looks like. These prices jump around so much right now. Not actually sure exactly where it's trading. Buck 70, buck 90. I'm going to cancel my 05s. Oh, I just got filled on the 15s. My homes is coming to play. All right, got to move. We got a minute. We got one minute. Uh, Yeah, JG. When I'm live, we're live streaming like this. Like I don't always have the opportunity to copy and paste my trade in there because it's I'm managing two trades at the same time. Price is moving. That's kind of the last thing on my mind. One more little push. Verticals filled. Touchdown, Mahomes. With 23 seconds to go. Very nice. See, you can still play Mahomes in high VIX. We got VIX 24. Nice. Good way to end the day. Plus 2K on that one. SPX settles at 53.19 and change. All right, all. Good day. Good day to be alive. Uh Tomorrow is what's tomorrow, August 9th, Friday. Chad will be streaming live in the morning for Mighty 90 and Runners. And then we will be back for Power Hour. Take care. Have a good evening. Talk to you soon.